name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We come to celebrate this Mass this morning for the intention uh, of Innocent and of Zena Ferreira, that they may rest in peace. Perhaps appropriate that we reflect often at Mass about those who've gone before us marked with the sign of faith. It reminds us of our own pilgrimage, our own journey, and indeed the readings this morning will reflect on that journey, that uh, way in which we are called to bear fruit in this life. To begin this Mass, we recognize that to do so, we need God's strength and his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Each one of us has been given his own share of grace, given as Christ allotted it. It was said that he would. When he ascended to the height, he captured prisoners. He gave gifts to men. When it says he ascended, what can it mean if not that he descended right down to the lower regions of the earth. The one who rose higher than all the heavens to fill all things is none other than the one who descended. And to some, his gift was that they should be apostles, to some, prophets, to some, evangelists, to some, pastors and teachers, so that the saints together make a unity in the work of service, building up the body of Christ. In this way, we are all to come to unity in our faith and in our knowledge of Christ. Until we become the perfect man, fully mature with the fullness of Christ himself, then we shall not be children any longer or tossed one way and the other and carried along by every wind of doctrine, at the mercy of all the tricks men play and their cleverness in practicing deceit. If we live by the truth and in love, we shall grow in all ways into Christ, who is the head by whom the whole body is fitted and joined together, every joint adding its own strength for each separate part to work according to its functions. So the body grows until it has built itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. I rejoiced, I rejoiced when, when I heard them say, let us, let us go, go to, to God's, God's house. house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go up to God's house, and now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I rejoice when I heard, I heard them say, say let, let us, us go, go to God's, God's house. house. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. I, I rejoice when I heard, when I heard them, them say, let, let us, us go, go to God's, God's house. house. For Israel's law it is, 
there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. I rejoiced rejoiced when I heard them say, say, let let us us go go to God's God's house. house. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 on whom the tower at Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose they were any more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, all will perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, look here, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year. Give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. As you know, there is a strong link in Scripture between the image of the vine and the relationship of people to God. People constantly reminded that God is the vine dresser that the vine needs to be pruned and that the people are called to bear fruit. In this gospel, the Lord speaks of the owner of the vineyard looking for fruit on the vine and finding none. And having found none for the last three years, quite understandably, he decides that it is time. He orders that it be cut down. But he's asked, begged, Sir, leave it one more year. Give me time to dig it round, manure it. It may bear fruit next year. This comes in the context of a dialogue that the people uh, who are being with the people who are being called by the Lord. For generations, they've been failing to produce the fruit and he has come to intercede for them to tend the vine, to call it to bear the fruit of which it is able. And we know that it will not bear fruit. And we know that the Tower of Siloam, uh, having collapsed, will be a prophecy for the fall of Jerusalem uh, sometime after. St. Paul, in the first reading, is also calling forth fruit. He reminds us that some are called to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, so that together the saints may make a unity in the work of service, building up the body of Christ. It is the call to us, the call to build up the body of Christ. And this Sunday, we will celebrate uh, the canonization of the 40 martyrs of England and Wales. The homily tomorrow will be given by Bishop Richard, so you may think that I'm trying to sneak my homily in now, but I think there's a real connection between these readings and that feast that we'll celebrate. I was at a small group meeting uh, the other evening. We were talking about the Mass and the way in which we should prepare for it. It would be good as we prepare for the celebration of Mass tomorrow, to find out at least a little about the saints who will be celebrating 
these saints who fulfill that call of St. Paul from different backgrounds, different gifts, living out different lives, but all faithfully and all bearing fruit. It was said by St. Irenaeus that the church in the British Isles will only begin to grow when she begins again to venerate her own saints. It's a quote which, in fact, I got from um, the front of a booklet which has been produced, which you can, in fact, download from the parish website. There's a link just next to the picture of St. Philip Howard, one of the 40 martyrs. It would be good to pray the litany which this book contains as our preparation for the feast. And by God's providence, it seems to me that these readings call us to that preparation. And these saints, you can also read in the booklet, extraordinary people. Some of the, the words that they said as they approached this moment. St. John Fisher Christian people, I've come hither to die for the faith of Christ's Catholic Church, and I thank God hitherto my courage has served me well, so that I have not feared death. Wherefore, I desire you to help me and assist me with your prayers. I, I pray God, save the king and the realm, and hold his holy hand over it, and send the king good counsel. Our own St. Philip Howard said, The Catholic faith which I hold is the only cause which either I have been thus long imprisoned or why I am ready to be executed. St. Henry Walpole said, Gentlemen of the jury, I confess most willingly that I am a priest and I am a companion of Jesus, that I came over in order to convert my country to the Catholic faith and to unite sinners to repentance. St. Margaret Clitheroe, I will not be afraid to serve God and do well. If God's priests dare to venture to my house, I will never refuse them. And St. Anne Lyne, I am sentenced to die for harboring a Catholic priest. And so far am I from repenting of what I've done that I wish with all my soul that I could have entertained not one, but entertained a thousand. These are people of extraordinary faith, extraordinary strength. Reflecting on them, praying this litany together will help us not just to celebrate the feast more fully, but to live out more fully that call that we've just heard in these readings. We are reminded that we are called to serve, called to be saints, that the Lord intercedes for us and asks that we will be given time but that that time is now. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, the benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Just reminder, 11 o'clock, there is online uh, the opportunity for various members of the parish to come together to chat, uh, to hobnob with the clergy, uh, as it's becoming known. Um, reminder too, as I mentioned earlier, there is a link for um, the, the booklet uh, about the, the litany of the saints, the martyrs of England, the various quotes which I was um, reading out, and I don't know if I made clear, are literally marginal notes next to the litany itself. So, so I do commend it as a way of properly preparing for our celebration tomorrow and of being inspired by the saints for what we might do uh, today uh, in the spread of the faith. The 10 o'clock mass tomorrow, here it will be um, live streamed as usual. It will be the votive mass uh, for the martyrs of England, 40 martyrs of England and Wales. But all the masses uh, will, will celebrate them. And as say, Bishop Richards, uh, via video, will preach at them all. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.